Damo, welcome. We're live, brother. Live on air. Live on air. Great to be here, Paul, and uh, yeah, thanks for having me. My pleasure. Kitchen Confidential. My, <laughs> <laughs> the warts and all. The warts and all. You're right. I want to start at the start, which yeah. seems pretty logical for an ex-banker. Yeah. Um, chefing. How did you get into it? Why did you get into it? And where did it take you? I guess it's probably been in my DNA, if you like. Um, I grew up in a small country town in, in New Zealand called Wanaka, and um, my parents had a restaurant. My father was a restaurateur. From a young age, I was, you know, you know, cutting mushrooms and, and you know, growing up in in, in that uh, environment. And it was just, I guess, a, a natural sort of progression, you know, being, um, you know, growing up in it and then moving away from a small country town to do my apprenticeship in uh, Christchurch back in the back in the early 90s. I sound old saying that, but uh, yeah, a long time ago. And then did my apprenticeship in Christchurch and um, from there moved to Sydney where I worked for Matt Moran for four years running his kitchen at Potts Point. And, um, Which restaurant was that? That was Moran's. That was just before Matt. The original Matt. one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was where we had the cafe at the front and um, where the fish shop is now and then had the, uh, the restaurant on the on the side there, yeah, so incredible. four years. So yeah, how was it working for Matt? Oh, it was great. I mean, you know, it's funny you come out of your apprenticeship um, thinking you 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 know a lot, and um, mm. you know, it was walking into that kitchen was you know it was a real eye opener as to you know what you know real good produce was, and and uh, you know and you know hard. You know, he was a, he was a taskmaster, but um, you know he's he's probably one of my you know mentors you know to, you know to this day as far as you know my influence on cooking style and, and, you know, and, um, and that kind of thing. But yeah, it was, it was, it was a lot of responsibility and it was young and it was, you know, it was, it was what young chefs do, you know, you know. How intense was it though? Oh, look, I think, you know, it, it, I think it's par for the course. There's this, you know, <laughs> cooking is a stressful job, you know, being a chef is a stressful job. Um, at that age, I always think I was maybe, I was 21, I think, and I think, you know, I, I started off as a chef de party and very soon worked up to sous chef and, and you know, was running the kitchen in Matt's absence and, you know, it was long days. There was two or three double shifts a week, you know, there was, you know, two single shifts a week, you know, but I would always go in, you know, early. I'd be there two hours before I had to be there or three hours because I always wanted to be super ready for service. But, um, you know, at that age, it was, it was kind of, you know, I was 21 and that's, that's that's what you did, you know. Yeah. If you wanted to, you know, create opportunity for yourself, um, then then you know you had to, you worked you worked your guts out, and you know that's that that's how it is. You know, that's how, not today, not just how it was then. And that's you know, pretty much par for the course. Do you think it's that in every industry though? Because this is the thing, hospitality has such a reputation for pressure, stress, mm. anxiety, depression, yes. drug abuse, etc. Why does it feel so unique to that industry? Like, and I get that things have to be delivered on time and and all of those kinds of things. But when you sit back and look at it objectively and go, at the end of the day, we're just serving food to human beings. So that they, they, <laughs> it's not rocket they, science. Yeah, they, right. they, can, they can eat, but and without doubt, I'm not discounting the fact that it is stressful mm. because there's pressure from guests, there's pressure from management, there's pressure mm. from everywhere. But do you feel that it is unique? To, to the hospitality industry, the the amount of pressure that the that everyone seems to put on themselves. Oh, like I don't think it's you know unique to to any industry. I think you know there's any any job, you know, where you wouldn't want it to you know to get to the top of the you know the, the food chain. Um, you know, you're going to have to work hard, and and there's there's you know there is. You know, there's going to be times when you know the cost to benefit ratio is 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 sort of you know is not in your favour. But, mm. you know, the, the I guess, the, you know, that's not specific and I don't have the data, you know, on, on you know, mm. hospitality versus, you know, corporate versus dentist versus whatever it might be. But um, but I certainly know that, that, that I think, um, you know, other industries are certainly more maybe proactive with their approach to acknowledging, um, you know, the load on the barbell, if you like, for, you know, for, you know, people. you know, I worked in, in a, had a corporate, as you mentioned, as I mentioned before, a you know, contract for a corporate, you know, car, um, catering firm in the city, and and they were very proactive. There was an allocation there of of of, of a certain amount of you know times you could go and see an in-house psychologist because mm. there was an acknowledgement that it was you know a stressful job. 
Um, you know, so yeah, I don't think it's specific just to hospitality, but I think hospitality, you know, is you know, in restaurants are, are a business with you know low margins and and you know, and it, and it's it, it's a tough industry in which to be successful and to and, and to make money and the attrition rate you know is is huge it is the huge, failure rate is is massive so we've got this you know this business model if you like which has you know you know <laughs> low margins and, and there's there's almost an expectation that because it's it's the margins are low that you know the chefs have to work you know and waste up over and above mm. i guess what's perceived to be normal um in order to sort of you know you know get to the top of the food chain or to, you know, make sure that those wages costs are in line with, with you know, how they should be. So, should the, be. so the owner, will, you know, can make, can make the money. So make the money. Yeah. 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 I mean, there's no got the capital risk. Yeah, exactly yeah. right. And, you know, there's no, um, there's no silver bullet in any of this. Mm. You know, that's, the, that's the, um, that's the, uh, I guess the, the, the challenging part to this whole thing and, you know, having a conversation around, um, the hospitality industry and the pressures that that, that go with it, um, you know, there's there's you know, there is no silver bullet, but but I, but I think you know, and I've always been a great believer, you know, not always, but up until a point that you know, being proactive in our approach to acknowledging, you know, loads on the barbell for young chefs, mm. um, you know, and 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 giving them the tools in which to be able to you know, cope. You know yeah, cope and and move forward and and you know, and be okay. You know, knowing that you know they do have a bit of knowledge, they can you know seek help. It's okay to not be okay. Yeah. You know, and and um, you know, I think you know at a baseline level, I think you know, and I don't have the answers. I know there's some wonderful initiatives out there. And there's the Lifeline, and there's you know, are you okay? And there's some amazing initiatives. You know, at the end of the day, it's about you know the individual. You know mm. what I mean? Um, they have to want to. You know, to change, to change, but all of those organisations to me feel a little bit like the treatment for cancer once you've got it. Well, this is the idea, Paul, and and you know, and and this you know reactive, you know, approach to our health and well being. You know, it's simply it's it's not sustainable, and this is not just you know um, exclusive to hospitality. This is across the board. Mm. You know, we need to you know become more proactive. You know, this is what we need to do. You know, mm. and if we're talking about the hospitality industry, you know, do we open up a, a discussion on on you know at at that baseline level of you know you're doing your your cert three professional cookery, whatever it might be. What is there, and I don't, I don't have the answer to this because I didn't do my, you know, cooking training in, in Australia. I did in New Zealand, but you know, is there an opportunity there to, you know, instill a, a module on mental health or mm. a module on stress or, you know, how do we cope with this? What are the warning signs? You know, yeah. because if I think back to, you know, a, a time when, you know, I got, you know, really bad anxiety, then. I didn't know what that was, and this is maybe ten years ago. It was just a feeling. It was an, it was a weird feeling, mm. you know. And waking up with that feeling constantly over a long period of time, and just built up. But you know, I've certainly been proactive in my approach to that over the years, and learning to meditate with Tim Brown and Paddington, and yeah. doing a number of things which have helped. But you know, I think the key is being proactive, and mm. um, you know, it's this is you know. Once again, it's up to the you know individual. It has to be self referral. That person has to, you know, ask the questions. They mm. have to, you know, and unfortunately, you know, people aren't, you know, so they don't seek counsel, you know, in, before it's too late. You know, and this is the this is this this is the uh, the tough one. You know, do you think it's a little bit more systemic than that though? That people go into become a chef and they're artists like most chefs that are like really mm. great chefs that I know are truly artists but then they're thrust into running a business and mm. they're asked to be great business people <laughs> and th and they're not mm. equipped with the skills like this is the fundamental thing I've never seen a business model where at the end of whether it's a 10 hour shift an mm. 8 hour shift or an 18 hour shift of stress and mania that people sit down and make one of the most important decisions they'll make all day or week or year, which mm. is ordering produce. 
and wondering why they're stressed. Oh, look, I think that's, you know, that's an, another important, you know, aspect to, you know, that baseline level of, of, of training, not only, you know, not only the, you know, the, the, the mental health side and, the, and acknowledging that, that, that we're in a stressful industry, but, <clears throat> the, excuse me, some more, you know, training on running a business. Running Ru- a business, running time a, management, all, using business all, all intelligence. All of that stuff. It's not just about, you know, getting your calculator out and, you you know, you working out well you this is what this is how you work out a bloody food cost mm. or what what about you know cash flow what about you know all these other things that create stress which which in turn you know constricts the you know ability for the chef to be able to do their job as well as they should be able to do mm. i mean there's some wonderful examples out there you know don't get me wrong it's not all doom and gloom there's some you know there's some fantastic chefs at the top of the game you know who, who consistently you know doing new staffing right. and being innovative and and you know and I, I guess you know they've you know they've worked it out you know how how do i put as much load on the barbell as i can and without breaking, without yeah. it breaking, you know, yeah. and that, and they've kind of they, they've they've worked it out. Whether it be, you know, they're aligned with a with, you know with a good business mentor or a business partner that has the cash flow. Um, you do know, you think that's a big part of it? Like, if you look at Matt Moran that 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 you trained under, do you think Matt was implicitly talented as both a chef as a business person, or was it the partnership with Bruce that that really enabled him to? To take his business, not mm. necessarily his cooking talent, but his business to another level, because it was that wonderful fusion of the artist and the businessman. Oh, I think it's in a combination of you know of, of both. I think you know, I mean, you know, life in its entirety is about relationships, and you know, Matt obviously had a great you know relationship with himself and his ability to cook, and and you know, through that you know established a relationship with with you know. With with Bruce and and they've mm. and, and obviously through Peter as well and they did some you know have gone on to do some amazing uh-huh. amazing things but I think certainly um you know aligning yourself you know with 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 if if, if someone believes in you you know and I'm off to London very soon to open up a restaurant in Belgravia for a guy for the consulting gig you know so you know this is great because it allows me to be creative mm. you know with equity in the business but without having to have the bloody load of you know worrying about you know the day to day and the yeah, capital risk yeah you know and- the, you know this you know the superannuation and you know or you know the payroll all, all of that you know white noise in the background which running a small business particular restaurant you know mm. is is you know it's omnipresent and mm. uh, you know and when that white noise in the background is 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 constantly there you know and you're worrying constantly about how do I pay this or how do I pay that or you know it it, it restricts your ability to be able to be creative and be the artist and, and 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 that in turn creates this you know sort of you know feelings of you know you know not worthy or whatever it might be you know yeah. so it's it's a it's a it's a it's a it's a it's a sort of a bit of a horrible cycle that a lot of chefs have sort of get caught up in which is why I mean you don't see many blokes my age bloody rattling the pans that's for sure if they do and they it, still are. Then, then I mean, I, I, I've got an absolute huge amount of respect for them because it's not it's that a, many at no, all, is no, there? No. The decision by you to go from cooking for someone else to operating a a, a small cafe yep. that, that Anthony owned in in Wallara, what was the decision there? Oh, I've, I've, <laughs> I'd, I'd, I'd bought a, a piece of land in New Zealand and and. I had to get a, a good job, and and through a family I was doing a, a private cooking work for, um, he and he was the landlord of of the cafe that Anthony actually owned, and Anthony brought me on board in a chef manager role, and um, you know we built that business you know right back up, and and then we brought it back off Anthony. So you know he was you know hugely instrumental in giving me a great opportunity, and mm-hmm. me and Justine, my wife, to to be able to you know to get ahead so run your own business yeah run our own business and that was you know that was you know it was a different time you know that was when casual dining in sydney was 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 very very you know um underplayed if you like you know i mean it's a completely different market then you know Mm. so you know we were doing you know restaurant quality food at sort of cafe prices in a buzzy environment Mm. and it served the need of the time and and you know it was a great business and you know and you know by the end of it you know it was doing you know, huge numbers, and we created a you know a sense of community around that business, and it was you know, 
that was before children and we had, you know, disposable income. It was amazing. So what's changed? Like if someone was going to do that today, go and open a, a, a smallish cafe in a, a hip little suburb, mm. is it still a viable option for people, for young chefs, or would you say to them, don't be crazy? Oh, look, you know, for, I think there's been instances where I've, where I've, you know, scratched my head and, you know, people have said, I'm going to go and do this or I'm going to do that. Um, and I remember this one bloke who sold my mum's house. He was a real estate agent at the time, and you know he, his, you know, his partner was Mexican. He said, "I'm going to go and you know open up this Mexican restaurant up and um, it was a Terrigal or Gosford." Yeah. And I was, and I was, I, I might was like, "Well, why, why are you doing that? You know, why are you doing that?" And out of that, you know, he's gone into you know barley and he's he had Mexicola and you know, like you know, oh, I know you him know, actually. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, I wish I could remember his name, but um, you know. And I guess the inner sort of- He um, had a business partner too. I he think did. this is the other classic case yeah, of- right. I think the advice for most people, particularly if your real passion is cooking, mm. then don't assume you're going to be a great business person. So therefore partner with someone, one that is, but also that you can trust and make sure you get the legalities around that perfectly right because that'll be a disaster too otherwise. Exactly right. You know, and, and, and you know, and, and, and someone that uh, that understands the, you know, the business as well. Mm. I mean, you know, I think there's certainly, you know, there's a bit of a, you know, in a cynic would, you know, sort of say to young guys, you know, why would you want to do that? But then you've got some, you know, you know chefs out there today doing, you know, some incredible stuff. You know? Amazing stuff. The guy, you know, from, you know, fish butchery and, you know, mind-blowing stuff. And these young guys are just going, you know what, I'm going to have it. I'm going to have a crack and, and good on them, mm. you know, as, as as I did it at a young age as well. And, um, you know, it's, it once again, it's, you know, what, what you reap, you sow kind of thing. But, you know, there's got to be, an understanding and some knowledge around that cost to benefit ratio, you know, mm. because if you don't know your numbers, and I've never been a numbers guy, I've been creative, I never knew my numbers. Did Justine know the numbers? No, well, she's half Dutch, well, you would think she did, but you know, like we opened up our second business, Madame Charcha, which ran concurrently with Buddy Flat White Cafe, and you know, our bookkeeper at the time, you know, he. It's, you know, three months into it, he said, "Damien, what what are you using for cash flow? What's how, where's your cash flow coming from?" I said, "What's what's that?" You know, like serious, like you but know, this I got is so, so common. Yeah, well, I got so carried away with the creative, you know, side of making this, you know, bloody chicken shop look like it was, you know, million dollars. Overcapitalized on the fit out. Mm, what'd you spend on the fit out? Oh, I think we would have spent probably three hundred and fifty thousand. I reckon all up borrowed. Yeah, borrowed and we, yeah. we partnered with someone as well. Um yeah. you know, which, you know, in retrospect, you know, was was was, you know, it was overcapitalized. But How it, did it go? Well, the the retail component, you know, it, it it went okay, but out of the back end of that we got a you know, contract for a corporate catering firm in the city, which was our bread and butter for four years. So it was yeah. a chicken and egg. Without the store we wouldn't have got the the other. Yeah. With the corporate which was which was quite lucrative and 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 um, you know, the cost of benefit ratio of doing that corporate catering contract was was way more uh, enjoyable than than running a retail, uh, you know, takeaway chicken shop, that's for sure. Good. Tell me, Demo, early in the piece when you're a young guy working as a chef, how much Sex, drugs, and rock and roll was part of the industry. Oh, look! I think you know. I mean, I was a, I was a bit of a, maybe a bit of a late bloomer, to be honest. I, I, I started my apprenticeship quite young, but seventeen, I did my apprenticeship. You know, but back then it was just, you know, you'd, it was a rite of passage. <laughs> maybe it's not New Zealand, but you know, smoking, you know, lots of dope. You know, that was what you did. You know, smoked a lot of weed. There was no, um, you know, cl- there, there was no class A. You know, back, you know. Before I was maybe twenty four, twenty five. So, yeah. unfortunately, there was uh, you know it wasn't as much sex as I'd like. But you know, <laughs> you know, at that stage of the game, I was looking after a father <laughs> who was you know sort of terminally ill. So I was running you know in between shifts, going home and helping him have a bath and all this kind of stuff. So it was you know in the background, you know, I was doing all these you know all this you know stuff. But, but the, the responsibility was still there. Was 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 there? But um, you know, certainly you know my short term memory these days is you know directly related to what I consumed between the ages of 18 and 24, Paul, which was, you know, it was, yeah, it wasn't. Do you think it's part of the problem though, Damo, that that it is an industry that attracts gregarious people that love to entertain (laughs) and that letting off steam at the end of a shift is typically drinking and partying and staying up late and it becomes that vicious cycle of, 
I'm tired, I'm stressed, so I'll self-medicate and then it all just keeps compounding and and then it ends up in the form of depression as opposed to is someone biologically depressed and you add stress, yeah. alcohol, drugs on top of that. Like it's the chicken and the egg and I'm never quite sure which one it is. Well, I think, you know, the, 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 the hospitality industry, you know, you know, as a rule of thumb is, is one where you have to work you know, unsociable hours, mm. um, you know, and, and it's funny because I, th- I was just thinking today when I was driving up about there's, there's this almost this idea of um, with, the, you know, these cooking shows that have come on board and with online, you know, Instagram that, that there's the, there's an element of glamour, you know, to this to this industry. But when you peel away the layers of the onion, you, 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 you soon work out that it's, you know, you know, it's 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 an enjoyable you know industry to work in, but mm. it's 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 brutal. It is brutal. You know, it's, it's it is really really brutal. You know, low margin for error, low margin for return. Like it's really tough. Yeah, like when you look at it on paper, it's you know, it's you know, it, it's 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 it, you go, why why would you do it? Why would you start this? But you know, when you're creative mm. and, and and you are you know a chef and you and and, and to a degree you know as you say an artist. You know that that becomes secondary. Mm. But what I've learned over the years through being aligned with you know different you know business partners through different ventures. You know we had a, ven- a venue called um, Ruby Lotel, which was a pub in in, um, in um, Roselle, and I was partners with the boys from Sumo, so James and Luke, and we yeah. had another couple of partners. But you know James knew his numbers. Or he was an XL guy. You know he, you know the first thing was that it, how to get give me this number. That's how you know so. From from then on, I sort of had a good grasp on the idea of you know making sure that the numbers are there, and then you know, and then inserting the creative on top of it process as well. But you know, unfortunately for him, you know he you know he he didn't work it out, and and you know went on to do some pretty cool stuff. But you know he did, he didn't um you know yeah survive if you like. You know. Sumo blew up, yeah. Well, I would you know I mean Luke still has sumo, but James obviously opened up. Um, the Norfolk and the Carrington and, and yeah. um, all of those venues, and then you know he he passed away. At, I think at thirty six or something like that through you know through overdosing, you know, and, and then which was tragic, you know, um, you know, and, and once again brings back to that, you know, is is it just the hospitality industry or or is that you know that that it's partying? So and, many it's, industries. It's, well, I don't. I think it's you know. I don't finance think finance was like that. I watch, and then then you, music is probably the most. Notorious of all, I watched the documentary on or the movie on um, the Motley Crew the other night, Do yeah, well. or whatever it's called. Like you want to talk about hardcore living and mm. just almost an inevitable self-destruction, mm. it's there. And yet somehow people seem to navigate their way through. I know a lot of victims along the way, but some people seem to be able to navigate their way through it and mm. they come out the other end like ACDC and instead of going home and doing heroin, they go home and have herb tea these days. <laughs> you know, so it's 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 choices. It's always choices, which for you at some point you and Justine decided that this super cool little life you created in Sydney, the catering business, flat white in Wallara, mm. was not doing it for you, was too stressful, was was whatever it happened to be and you went bush. Well, we had this, you know, wonderful sort of situation where we had, you know, a corporate catering contract where, you know, it was I didn't have to be, you know, on site. You know, it was there maybe one or two days a week and it was it was it was ran and it ran well for you know, the best part of four years, you know, the company we worked for, they won the BRW best place to work for, you know, it was, you know, it was the next year they were a runner up, you know, it, it, it was a wonderful, you know, opportunity to just to be able to, you know, we were feeding 300 people every day. So we had this great opportunity to, you know, to, to, you know, have young children and, and to be there for them. And, you know, probably people scratch their heads that meet me during that period of time wondering what what you did. What it is that I actually did, you know, you know, and um, you know, had all the toys and all all, all of that kind of stuff and, and and all of the eggs in one basket. And that's when we moved to the Hollands and, and but you know, that that sort of got um that wasn't renewed if you like. So out of that, you know, Boar was born Grand Bistro, which is you know what we have now and um you know and uh, you know that's going pretty well. How did you find the move though, like moving out of the hustle and bustle of Sydney and down to Barrel? Oh, look, I think, 
you know, like everything, you know, my wife and I do, we do sort of at the speed of light. So the the the, the decision was made pretty quickly, and yeah, and you know, I I, I think it's it's great. You know, there's, I think there's a purity about being in the city, mm. and so in the in the country, and you know, getting your hands in the soil and good sense of community, which I think is great. You know, I've got four kids, you know, seven, six, five, and four. You know, I think I think it's, it's you know it's a great place to bring up children. I mm. think there's, there's a real purity about it, and you know, I couldn't. You know, I couldn't see myself living, you know, back in the city. But a lot of people do it, though, don't you think? And you know, pack up their troubles in their old kit bag and get there and realise that the same person that was dissatisfied in the city <laughs> is still waiting for them when they arrive at their front door. And, and even more so because in the yeah. city, it's very easy to hide in the busyness of a city. Yeah. You know, and and I've got a bunch of friends. You know, I go to Colorado every year, and I've got mm. a bunch of friends that live in Aspen, one of the most beautiful places on the planet without doubt, and the suicide rate in Aspen is the highest in the country. Mm. And this conversation that I've had with so many people around, why is it? Like it is so ostensibly attractive to do what they do. Like a lot of them don't have a lot of money mm. and perhaps that's it. You've got someone that's got a holiday house worth $50 million and there you are working three jobs just to – to make ends meet, but they're there because they love nature and mm. they love skiing and they love the great outdoors. But if they come to it and they haven't sorted themselves out, then ultimately it does catch up. And I, I had a really dear friend, a, a Kiwi mate of mine mm. that lives there and his wife, who's who's an American, beautiful young girl, and just a month ago she hung herself. Mm. Like it just doesn't make sense. You, you 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 look at it objectively and say they were both party animals and mm. perhaps that's the common denominator with everything. If you strip yeah. it right back that if you've got mm. an unstable person and I don't mean unstable in any derogatory form but just things aren't peaceful internally and then you self-medicate in the guise of having a good time and partying, then – Ultimately, that comes to a dead end and for some people that dead end is if I can't be happy in this beautiful place, whether it's Barrel or Aspen or wherever it happens to mm. be, then I'm not going to be fucking happy anywhere. Well, it's, you know, that's, you know, that's exactly right. And, uh, you know, and a happiness is not, you know, geographically, you know, located, you know, as you, as you just mentioned, it's, you know, it's a sense of yourself, you know, if you're happy, you know, you know, here in yourself, then you'll attract, you know, all of that, all of that good stuff. And I've been, you know, through, you know, my own battles with, you know, with anxiety, you know, over the years, been in, you know, I would think it was, you know, last January, I checked myself into a mental health hospital, you know, and but before that, the three days, I was, you know, in the most beautiful place in Wiseman's Ferry, you know, surrounded by my family and my Where's it come from then, Damo? Like for you, where did it start and what triggers it? Oh, it's, you know, to be honest, it's 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 like a – what, are you talking about anxiety? Anxiety, depression, however you want to label it. Oh, anxiety is it, – it, it, it's it's like a – you know, it's, it's it starts with rumination and, um, you know, and it's like a train leaving the station. Mm. And you know, but what are you acting? What are you typically anxious about? Is it finances? Is finances it a- are generally they play a big part in in in, in you know in, in my anxiety. You know yeah. that, but but it can come from nowhere. You know, what I mean, it could be one of those things that just you know you wake up in the morning, and you just feel something's not right. You know, and that that can you know the idea for me, you know, to this, you know to have to do a shift in my kitchen is enough to make me you know start to worry, which will turn into, you know, you know, like, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll reach a point where I just like, this can't literally can't physically and mentally can't do that aspect mm. of the job, but the creative side of it, you know, I love, yeah. you know, so it's, and, and with that comes this, you know, this, this feeling of, you know, of, of you know, guilt and self doubt that you can't be in there, you know, grinding away for the, you know, for the boys, mm. but the reality is you just can't do it. You know, and I've reached a point now in my life where I acknowledge that, you know, that heavy lifting, you know, aspect of it is, is you know, it's it's past me. You know, it's my past, mm. and you know, it's now. You know, it, the challenging part is, you know, working out how do you, how do you graduate from that when when all your you know skills, all, all I can do basically is you know is, is is cook. It's been my whole life, so you know, working out how you you can leverage off your you know your personal your professional relationships in order to be able to. To graduate to to that next level, and, you know, some guys work it out at you know at a young age, and 
you know, they align themselves with the right people and, um, mm. you know, and, you know, I'm working it out and, and we're getting there. And, um, yeah. but, you know, we, there's been some, you know, undulation over the last couple of years, which has been pretty uncomfortable. And I'm not going to lie. Do you think with chefing, cooking, it is a bit like being an athlete that really, like you said before, it does have an end date. Like you just don't see. Absolutely. You know, you've got. Kelly Slater that's 46 and still professionally surfing but he's the he's the freak you know most people are done in their early 30s most other professional sports people are done in their mid 20s mm. most chefs if they're really honest are probably done in their in their mid 30s mm. and that the industry doesn't provide enough preparation like sporting professional sporting teams do mm. going listen demo mm. You can't do this forever, but we're going to help you to plan for the future. And that's it. And that's another, you know, interesting conversation that can be had, you know, around that, once again, that baseline level of, of, you know, let's, when we are starting, you know, thinking about other aspects of, you know, of the industry and like you say, you know, getting out of it. Mm. What are other, other things we can do whilst we're, you know, doing our cooking that can, you know, can add value to what we're doing, but can also be, a, you know, a, 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 a different, you know, career path yeah. that's still aligned with, you know, you know, with, with, with cooking and, and, and being creative. You know, I think back to, you know, um, you know, Emma Knowles, who was an apprentice at, for Matt, you know, she, she was an incredible, you know, adult age apprentice. And then she went on to, you know, be, you know, f- you know, food director for, you know, Gourmet Traveller and mm. did some amazing, amazing, amazing stuff. And, you know, She's she's incredibly creative and and you know it allows you know I guess you know she 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 gets to do the, all the creative stuff but you know she worked out a long time ago that doing the restaurant service stuff you know that probably wasn't um going to be long term you know so it's but uh, it is hard too though isn't it it's it's there are finite opportunities outside of those that are are cooking you know like there's mm. twenty seven thousand odd restaurants in Australia so there's probably four times that many chefs. There are only so many jobs, whether it's coming and working for a company like ours or being an editor for a food magazine mm. or being a, a celebrity chef, whatever it happens to be. You know, again, football analogy, that the number of footballers that can ultimately go on and become commentators is yeah, perhaps one, one a season mm. at best. Mm. You know, and so what do you do? Do you train people to develop other skills so that they can actually go, you know what? I was a well-paid professional, but now I need to go back to ground zero and do something else. Mm. And not many people do that with their career, where they where they go into it knowing that there's probably going to be two things that happen at the end of this. I'll be one of the lucky ones, and if mm. I have some help and mentoring and invest in myself and grow and and do all the right things, then I probably will be that one guy that gets the commentary job, for lack yeah. of a better description. Or I'm just going to do this for a period of time and I'm a free-spirited human being and if I get to the end, then, you know, I would have developed discipline, I would have developed the network, but I'll probably have to go back to the start and recreate a career. Yeah, and I, and I think, you know, once again, you know, that bringing that in at the, you know, at the at the introduction level, you know, when you when you start your training, you but know. there's no body. There's no well. This, there's, well no, there's no. There's no one that gives a fuck about the whole industry. Well, I guess this is you know, and this is this is one of the things I spoke to my wife last night. You know, if I said if you know, is if if there can be a discussion, you know, started, you know, about this and and how how we can come up with some sort of methodology that allows us to be more proactive, you know, at, 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 at you know at the entry level, you know, for chefs coming in. And and the key is proactive. That's mm. what it has to be. There has to be proactivity around this, you know, because it's, you know, it's you see it, you know, when someone, you know, kills himself, a chef, you know, everyone's, like, you know, so sad you know, and it's terribly sad. And it's for a tra- week. And it's tragic. And then, you know, you know, okay, that, that, that person obviously was, you know, was, was really, really struggling. You know, there's no silver bullet once again, but, you know, I, I can only speak on my own behalf, and I don't speak on behalf of the collective at all. But you know, I can't help but wonder. You know, if I had had some tools in my, in, my, in my belt earlier on, you know, to 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 you know, to learn from, to you know, to to 
to acknowledge that when that load on the barbell was becoming too too much, mm. then you know, and I, I I probably would have been you know you know had maybe a longer career sort of actually in the kitchen cooking, but mm. um, you know, if, there's no silver bullet. Once again, it's a it's a it's a it's a it's a it's a, it's a challenging sort of you know topic of conversation but the, you know i think it's i think it's important that there, there needs to be some more dialogue around around it and mm. and and how do we you know not how do we you know how do we get how do we get on the front foot a bit more with with you know with young chefs coming through if we're mm. talking about our industry you know specifically you know how do we how do we give them the you know the the guidance the mentorship you know you know how do we make them feel that it's okay to not be okay you know how do we? You know because you know there's there's a there's a it's, it's a very gung ho kind of job being a chef. You know mm. you've you got you look at that picture of you know Marco Pierre White. You know looking gaunt with a cigarette and and a young age. You know working as you know nuts off doing you know ninety hour weeks or whatever. You know Gordon Ramsay. All, you know all of these all of these badge guys. Of honor. It's a badge yeah. of honour. You've yeah. got to fucking work. You you know work seventy eighty hours a week. You know and you see these skinny gaunt. You know pale and they're, mm. they're, 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 they're at a young age, you know, and they have not got the, the cost to benefit, you know, ratio is just outrageously and not in their favor. You know, mm. they've got so much load on the barbell already, but they've got to do it. You yeah. push on. What do you do? You do another double shift, you know, you do a triple shift. That's that's par for the course. I mean, yeah. I don't think there's, you know, <laughs> there's, there's, you're not going to get a bloody. You know, a, a receptionist in a dental surgery, they're not going to ask her to do it. You know, a, mm. a double shift or a triple shift or back it up and be back at a seven o'clock on a on a Monday. You know, look, you know, we've we've been, you know, business owners and and you know, you know, we're going through a process at the moment, having trying to find staff in the Highlands. It's a bloody nightmare. Yeah, you know, imagine. so my chef's been working six days a week, and then he's got a huge load on his barbell. But mm. you know, we're in the position where, what do we do? Do we shut a day? You know. A week, so he's he's off two days a week. But you know, commercially, that's not really viable because you you lose the you lose the turnover. Then again, we've had businesses where we've acknowledged that it's a stressful environment. You know, flat white. Our chefs used to do five days one week, four days the next, mm. and they stayed for you know for you know for years. We had in eight years, we had two two head chefs. So offering that that um, that lifestyle that that gives them an opportunity to you know. To you know, to de-excite their bloody nervous system when they mm. when they have a day off, then they have you know every you know second week they've got that third day. Then I think that you know th there's some guys that are you know that are really starting to be proactive with that. I think what's the name? Um, what's the uh, guy from Melbourne? Ben he's got Ad with Attica. Sure, you know, you, sure, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So um, he is really good. Yeah, you know, yeah. acknowledging that it's 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 brutal and and um, you know, but. It, how how can we how can we offer, you know, a, a solution that's not just a band aid solution, but mm. it allows guys to be creative, and and to have longevity in in their in their careers, at the at the same time as is is you know moving towards you know a different goal that's that's not, you know, grinding grinding away you know in a in a kitchen in their forties being an angry old bastard you know mm. with a you know drug or an alcohol problem. Because you know they're they're out there. There's plenty of them out there. Why do you think it's predominantly the guys? You know, if we look at Darren Simpson, Jeremy Stroh, Justin Ball, Anthony Bourdain, probably the four highest profile people that are in my mm, peripheral, yeah, peripheral at the moment. I never, and maybe it's just a numbers game. I never hear about women suffering as much as men, and I I wonder whether it's this stoic pride that men have that the shame of financially failing is the thing that mm. that brings the anxiety and ultimately for for some of these people the the pressure just gets too much because we are starting to see it in other industries like the startup industry in silicon valley as an example there's mm. a lot of dialogue going on at the moment around that because there's all these young guys that Guys in particular, mm. you know, I, I use guys, but guys and girls, but largely, again, guys that typically would have come out of college, gone to an investment bank, gone to a consulting firm and 
have guaranteed themselves a, a six or if not seven figure income if they just followed that path. Mm. But instead they go out because they want to be the next Zuckerberg or, or Elon Musk or whoever mm. it happens to be, borrow a boot full of money or raise a boot full of money and it fails, which it invariably does, mm. a bit like a restaurant but even more so. And for them the shame of that is so high that the only option they give themselves is to – literally and figuratively fall on their sword. Mm. And I think that's got to be part of the the narrative that men are allowed to fail. It, you know, it, and, and it's exactly right. I mean, I can't speak on behalf of anyone other than myself, you know. Uh, you know, you give the reference of you know, Anthony Bourdain, you know, who you know, on paper, you know, had, a had perfect, everything. Had a, had, had a perfect life. Um, you know, personally myself, you know, I've never been – Suicidal, but I've been never got close, am I? No, I've been at the precipice. I had yeah. a three day period where I, you know, I got misdiagnosed with my medication, and you know, which I take regularly now, one tablet a day for my anxiety. But I, you know, I was had a GP misdiagnosed me, put me on the wrong medication. I had an adverse reaction to it, and I had a three day period where you know I just didn't sleep, and I was in a position where. You know, I said to my wife, and it's, you know, it's very, very, you know, scary when when you, I guess, when your partner or your husband, and the father of your children is 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 saying to you, "Look, I'm not suicidal, but I can understand mm. why someone would want to do that." Mm. And that was when I checked myself into Cogra, you know, uh, mental health hospital, to get myself diagnosed. You know, so to, for someone to say, you know, why why do I feel like this? Why, mm. you know, why? Why do I wake up in the morning, you know, anxious to the pit of my stomach, you know, and why is this paralyzing me? Why does it stop me from, you know, doing certain jobs or, you know, taking on more? Um, and, and that was a pretty fucking scary place to be. Mm. Um, but, you know, from that, you know, I sought, you know, counsel and help and, 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 and you know, I feel for the first time in a couple of years like it's coming out of the back end of a tunnel mm. of, of actually feeling good you know, and, 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 but, you know, it's, it's, it, I, I, it feels like I, I don't want to be self indulgent sort of talking about me. I'm simply, you know, my story is, you know, is, is representative of a lot of people, you mm. know, and, and I just, you know, like I said at the start, you know, if, if I can be a, a conduit for someone else out there who's having a tough day at work or, mm. or listens to this and, and, and go, you know what, you know, that bloke, said it's okay not to be okay and there are mm. days when I'm not, you know, yeah. and, you know, but but I've got the tools and I've sought the counsel and, you know, regular exercise, you know, meditation, you know, eating well, you know, not drinking as much alcohol. I mean, you know, they are the, you know, the four they're sleeping the basics, well. They? They, they're the basics. You do yeah. those things, you know, and alcohol is a, alcohol is a big, big one. Mm. You know, you know, you remove that or you cut that back. And I tell you what, the clarity, you know, and the conscious altitude you get from not having your nervous system, you know, full of, you know, you know, depressants, mm. which alcohol is, don't get me wrong, I'm, you know, I'm not a, you know, I'm holding an hour and pious and saying, you know, I'm a non-drinker, I do enjoy a glass of wine, but um, certainly more conscious around how it makes me feel and uh, and without it, you know, how much more clarity and energy yeah. and joyfulness there is, you know, so. What about without the medication? Do you imagine life where you don't need the medication? Like can you do all <sighs> the things you just spoke about to a degree where, you no longer need a pharmaceutical to to give you that balance. Yeah, look, I think you know I've been on and off you know antidepressants for you know for the best part of you know a decade. So you know there was times when I'd come off and then I'd I'd be feeling you know amazing. Just just took myself off them, which you know in retrospect was you know was the wrong thing to do, and I certainly wouldn't advise that. Um, but you know I, I you know after a long period of time, it was only through getting properly diagnosed in a mental health hospital. And it, the diagnosis was simply you've had a load on the barbell for such a long period of time that, you know, the, the, you can't handle stress as much as, 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 as you could, used to. As I used to, you know. From yeah, but you age. had nothing biological though. No, it there's nothing. There's no, yeah. Nothing like that. Nothing like that, you know. And so there's this trade-off of, you know, with antidepressants or, or you know, there's there's <laughs> – there's no magic pill. There has every every medication has some sort of a side effect. So some one of the side effects of bloody antidepressants is sexual function. Mm. 
You know, so you know, I've been well, on those taps. Well, you know, you, you 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 can you just can't finish, you know, and it's that that in itself is bloody, you know, is awful. That'll make me unless anxious. you're going to be a bloody stunt double on a porno movie. I can't think of anything <laughs> other, other than anything, you know. So like, you know, or there's that, or there's you know, there's, there's the craving of the har- carbohydrate. So there was there's one tablet, you know, that the, the, the it's almost a trade off. You know, you can some of them make you a bit heavier or crave food, mm. or the other one there's a trade off of you know of, of sexual function. So I've ch- luckily been given a tablet. I take one one a night, and, and it helps me sleep. You know, and I do get cravings for carbohydrate. So mm. you know. I probably should be a wheat bix ambassador because I wake up in the middle of the night and then really just, yeah, them. oh, just you know, go to town, you know, because I get, I just crave. But you know, I'm a little bit heavier, but I'm happy, you yeah. know, and um, you know, and and th- and that for me is 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 a joy, you know, to be able to liberate it of you know, if if you know, for the best part of of feeling, you know, not worthy or guilty or 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 self doubt, all these things that you know are created through you know anxiety and, and and depression, and it's you know it's a feeling of liberation, mm. and it's you know it's it's a it's a challenging you know thing for me to see on social media when someone's you know with a young kids has 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 killed themselves and and you know to be able to see that and you know the, you see the messages and you know you know in the photographs and this is my mate and you know you know and I, and I just part of me feels sort of frustrated you know that 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 okay the, you're, there's some wonderful initiatives but you know how 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 could we have been more pro how how could we have how could this person have been helped more you know ultimately it's self referral that person has to want to go and seek help they have to have researched you know Enough misery and destruction in yeah. order for them to be able to force to ask the question to seek counsel to to get knowledge. Um, you know, it's down to the person at the end of the day. But um, I think having more, you know, more of a dialogue around, you know, you know, mental health, be it you know, men, women, whatever it might be. Mm. Um, you know, the more you know dialogue there is, and the more people that you know tell their story. And my story, like I said, is representative of you know of a lot of. A lot of people, you know, it's like you say, Paul. It's you know equally as important mm. um, as it is cathartic, you know, telling this story and, and sort of getting it, you know, purging, if you like, you know, yeah, no, to, I get you know it. to 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 give people, you know, a bit of bit of you know information so they can seek their own counsel. You know, I do think back to what we were talking about before, though, because I I believe that's absolutely true that we've got to teach people the skills, you know, and days when before service starts where as a collective the kitchen staff in front of the house do a five or ten minute meditation oh there you go i mean and meditation and this is this is the this is the wonderful thing you know i learned yeah. to me i taught meditation for three years ironically enough i did my teacher training with tim brown and paddington who's a you know magnificent man yeah, he's, he's an awesome man yeah, I yeah yeah well tim you know he's probably the most you know recognized vedic meditation teacher in, in, in australia and um you know that's still a tool that i have him with me every day that, maybe it has to be compulsory well i think it's you know it's i think it's a, it's it's a it's a great idea you know mm. you know you know give them the tools my six-year-old and my seven-year-old you know they learn to meditate when they're four they have a word of wisdom beautiful gift they, that allows them to you know to you know, we don't force it on them. You know, this is your going. Don't do your magic word yeah. for you know three or four minutes. You know, and 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 you know, it's stressful being a kid at primary school. Mm. So you know, you know, bringing in under under all of this, you know, some 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 tools that that that, that allow you to you know de excite your nervous system. Mm. I mean, I did a twenty minute meditation sitting in the car on the street out there before. Incredible. Just to you know, just to just to, just to you know, just to calm myself down a little bit, and you know, and it just gives you so much. You know, clarity. You know, it's mm. not the silver bullet. Once again, that there are no, but that combination of meditation, exercise, exercise eating well, sleep, and you know, not going too fucking crazy with you know booze and recreational drugs, and yeah. you'll, you know, you'll you'll have you'll you'll have a good happy bloody life. It's but, not rocket science. But, but that's it, isn't it? Like we live in a society, and and whether it is physical pain, emotional pain, psychological pain, that we just want a prescription. Like people don't want to understand the you're not feeling well. You can't just go to the doctor and get that silver billet that you talk about. Mm. This is probably going to be a three-month to three-year to ten-year journey to get you back to where you need to be. If you truly want to be purposeful and peaceful and happy and all those 
to me what really defines having a successful life. But yep. for, for, for so many people, and meditation is the classic, mm. that people start meditation and then go, I don't really feel anything, you know. It doesn't do anything. You mm. know, it's that they're not understanding that it's the – It's know, a preparatory pre- exercise is what and, it is. And, you and know, it's, it's, it's about the years. next – Yeah. It's, well, it's about the next 8, 10, 12 hours afterwards. That's what we're interested in. We're not interested in – What's happening with our eyes closed? You know, sitting up against the wall. That's that's yeah. the preparatory exercise. But um, you know, it's a, it's a, it's a wonderful uh, you know wonderful tool to have. There's no doubt about yeah. that. And the other part that I was going to mention before is this mandatory imparting of skills to to people, and 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 this can apply to the biggest groups as 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 much as it does to the the sole operators. Until as an industry, we start to get people being more practical and more organized and ordering well in advance so they're not got this constant stress at the end of a service that they've got to prepare for the next day. Mm. Like I think that's one of the fundamental and it's part of our problem here too. Mm. You know, we have people working in the middle of the night every night in a cold box because as an industry we can't get people to order 36 hours in advance. Mm. And so it's this vicious cycle of mm. Mm. you need to make money, we need to make money, but if we could all get a little bit more organised, then the stress would go from you. We'd have to pay 25% less to our people in the middle of the night and they'd have a better life. Mm. A bunch of that cost saving can then get passed on to to the restaurants. And so you start this really positive cycle of mm. change. Mm. Like, and it's something that Anthony and I are so committed to doing. You know, it's probably going to take us the good part of five years to do, but having a daytime shift here, not a nighttime shift, mm. but it requires getting chefs better at using business intelligence, chefs getting mm. better at, at time management and not being so reactive, and then overlaying that with all the stuff that you've just spoken about, which is the – the physical and mental health stuff, which is no rocket science. Like I think you mentioned the yeah. the, the, the four pillars that, that everyone gets. Mm. Like everyone on the planet gets that if they sleep, eat well, don't drink, drink and take drugs too much mm. and um, do a little bit of meditation or mindfulness or walking in nature mm. or whatever it happens to be, it's pretty hard not to be happy and healthy. Well, I think, you know, it's going to, you know, it, as – you know, I've always, you know, said, you know, Anthony and, and Vix Meats, they've always, you know, set trends. They haven't followed trends. And we're not talking about a trend here fundamentally, but, you know, but, you know, guys at the top of the game, that they, they have the opportunity to, you know, to, you know, get people like myself here talking, you know, to a broader mm. audience. Um, you know, they've got the, the, the facilities in order to be able to, you know, get this voice out to a broader audience. Mm. If these guys at the top of the game are bringing in, you know, underneath, the, you know, their business structure, you know, ways of, of, of allowing their employees to, to have less stress, you know, they're changing the world because those people go home to their loved ones and they have, you know, more to give, mm. you know, instead of having this constricted, stressed, bloody, you know, viewpoint. They get, you know, allow the full spectrum of bloody colours. You know, they can they can enjoy the full spectrum, you know. And this is this is important that you know that that, that guys, you know, there's an obligation, you know. I think you know for you know big you know hospitality groups, small hospitality groups, whoever they might be, mm. to you know, to you know bring in underneath the whole thing, you know, some 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 methods or some information or some knowledge or you know that 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 allows those, you know, young guys, older guys, whoever they might be, mm. the opportunity to 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 seek some counsel or advice, but not feel bad about it. Not feel that they're, they're they'll not feel that they're not, you know, um, you know, doing their job properly, you know, mm. and and you know, because that's that's where that that's where the whole thing buddy derails. Mm. The feelings of doubt, self doubt and guilt, you know, just you know, that cycle goes round. So, you know, guys like Anthony and, you know, you know, I've got no doubt that, you know, if you say Anthony's going to do it, then, he'll you know, do yeah, he'll do it and he'll do it before anyone else and he'll do it better than anyone else and, yeah. and, and people will go, how fucking good was that? Mm. You know, you know, like that's what, that's what he does and it's, you know, it's, that's, it's a remarkable quality, you know, and I think if we're talking about the broader level of, of, of this, of this, this conversation, you know, you know, if I can, you know, walk out of today, and 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 someone else is talking about it, or you know, did you listen to that podcast? And yeah, there's a, there's some good points there. Mm. Um, then great, you know. What's the things that you 
watch out for now, Damo, in so far as worrying about slipping back into where you were in January last year? Are you really focused on anything in particular that 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 you just go, I'm going down the wrong path again? Yeah, look, I know I know what what I can't do, you know, and, and I think that's half the battle is What can't you do? Well I mean, and take drugs. Well yeah, I mean I don't, I don't drink stuff. I don't drink much. Well you know, recreational drugs I've got no interest. I've you yeah. know, I've I've researched and developed that. Mm. You know, I've run a research project. I've 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 got a master's <laughs> degree in fucking, you know, misery. <laughs> you know what I mean? I've done it. I've researched, you know, yeah. you know, anxiety, depression, worry, all that kind of stuff. And 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 you know, it's a horrible research project, but mm. out of the back end of it, you know, has allowed me to know what I can and can't do, what my limitations are. And you know, you know, this it's it's ironic. You know, I'm off to the other side of the world soon to open up a restaurant in London, which doesn't phase me. But mm. the thought of going into my own kitchen and, and poaching an egg, mm. or doing a service, an actual service, scares the fuck out of me. You know, and, and you know, and that that that. So I know what I can and can't do. And underneath the whole thing, you know, I just. I need to, you know, and it, it's a, it's a cliche, you know, that you say, you know, think positive. But, you know, I was in a position where I'd become my thoughts. Mm. I'd become this negative person. My mm. thoughts became me. And now it's a conscious effort daily to, you know, when sometimes you might look at your, you know, your numbers and your overdraft and, you know, you know, GSTs do and, you know, all this kind of shit that comes with, you know, being a small business owner, in particular hospitality, is, is, is stressful. But, you know, I've just gone, right, you know what? We've always been okay. You know, we've never had, we haven't had, luckily for us, haven't had a business that's failed yet. You know, it's amazing. We, you know, we've brought four children into this world. You know, we're okay. But that mantra, <coughs> You know, it's you know, it's it's it, it's. I consciously have to remind myself, you know, and, and that's not to say every day is bloody roses, you know. Some days, but it never is though. It's not. I mean, for that's anybody, that's life. That's life for anybody. Yeah, like that's even life. the richest guy on the planet mm. has probably more problems than all of us put together. Mm. But it's that realization, you know, that and I've done it. I sent myself broke, mm. you know, at the ripe old age of forty six. Never thought I would be there, and I did it. Mm. And it was a super interesting process. Mm. Did I like it? <laughs> Fuck, I had seven figures in the bank yeah. two years prior. Of course yeah. I didn't like it. Was I fundamentally less happy? Zero. Mm. Like there was no change in my happiness. It may be because I had a good perspective. You know, I lost my mum during the same mm. period, so that put everything into perspective and and those kinds of things. But you survive. Mm. You know, and I think the storm shall pass. You the know, storm and, always and, passes, and that's you know, that's that's you know, that's the one message you know that you can get across. You know, if there's anyone that listens to this is having their battles or their demons, and this you know, not, tomorrow's another day. That this mm. storm will pass, whatever age. I yeah, think this is whatever the other age. Thing. Exactly right. There are people that you know, and it's it's interesting. We're you know the whole pride and connection thing of of getting our factory workers to actually appreciate the pain and suffering and stress and joy and excitement of of what our restaurateurs and and other venues do we've got a bunch of different initiatives on but on the thursday this week we literally got them all in the boardroom and we're mm. sitting there and making them watch the founder which is the story of ray Kroc and and mcdonald's amazing yeah that guy started at 52 yeah, yeah. you know yeah. the guy that created Grey Goose, created that when he was in his 70s. You know, even Colonel Sanders was in his 60s or 70s when he came up with the the magic herbs and spices or whatever that poison Incredible, food is. Incredible, you know. And, 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 that's, that's, and it's great, you know, giving, giving you know, that, that back to the, you know, to the, you know, the employees, you know. Mm. The, and then the message is, you know what, you know, this is right here right now is, is not, the, you know, it's the not future. the future. You know, it's just a... It's a it's a it's a little still frame photograph and a, you know a movie line of life you know and um, mm. this is what happens when you become so preoccupied with that you know that snapshot that's when you know the rumination starts and that's that's where these all these you know problems with mental health come in mm. rather than you know you know being you know in the position where you can sort of you know view the you know the big picture you know and think you know it's okay you know it's going to be okay yeah in closing Damo you've mentioned. TM or a Vedic yeah, meditation. Yeah, Vedic meditation, yes. Your family, moving to Barrel, you've done a bunch of really positive things. Outside of that, insofar as managing the anxiety and the stress and the depression and things, has there been a person, a movie or something else that you've done that you'd recommend 
anyone that's feeling even mildly any of those things to to actually watch, do, or or reach out for? Oh, look, I think you know, you know, a sliding door, you know, pivotal moment for me was was meeting Tim Brown, you know, who teaches meditation in, in, in Paddington. Um, that that for me was you know one of the best things I've done in my life. You mm. know, besides bringing you know four beautiful children to the world and. You know, learning to meditate was 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 quite simply one of the best things I've ever done. You know, yeah. and um, you know, proactively on a daily basis, you know, I'm letting off, you know, all these, you know, you know, elements of you know stress, tension, and fatigue. You know, mm. it's, and, and, but you know that would that would be the one thing. You know, I'm I'm not, I'm not sitting here trying to be the poster boy for Vedic meditation or yeah. you know trying to you know cross promote or anything. But you know, the, the answer to your question is is that, and you know, it's one of those things that. Um, until you've done it, you don't get it. Mm. But once you've done it and you've done it regularly, you start to see that you know that um, you know it's 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 no no coincidence that things start to go okay, mm. you know, because you're letting out all that stress and tension and um, you know, and it's you know feeling liberated and mm. feeling good and waking up in the morning and feeling positive and healthy. Shit, what a bloody joy, you know, yeah. you know it's um. What yeah. else are you feeding your brain? Like, what else are you listening to or reading, or that 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 constantly reinforces the the positive over the negative? Oh, look, I think just you know being trying to be present. You know, that's no. The but be- what are you specifically reading or listening to that you find helps you at the moment? Oh, look, the moment, I'm, the I'm, last twelve months, whatever. Oh, look, I'm 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 sort of more into you know how do I upgrade you know the 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 hard drive as opposed to you know reading books on on self help. You know, they certainly yeah. have their they have their place. What you know? about podcasts and things? Is there anything you're listening to that that you find really helpful? Oh, there's nothing that sort of springs to mind. You know, at the moment, obviously, okay. I, I I enjoy stuff that's you know that's you know, that's that's not Pretty quirky. Yeah, yeah, but but you know, uh, you know, I'm, I, I stuff that I like. I like watching comedy. You know, yeah. things that make me laugh. Things that make but me feel that, good. That's the, that's yeah, which the, is ironic because here I am doing this bloody podcast about. You know, anxiety and depression and all this kind of morbid stuff. But, you know, like, you know, laughing, you know, that's, you know, watching But isn't comedy. that it though, man? Like that's the answer I was looking for, like mm. finding those things in your life that bring you joy, mm. you know, and not the cliched ones, family and friends and stuff because mm. that's an obvious. Oh, they can annoy I, you, you know. Yeah, of course <laughs> they can. Yeah, absolutely. But I think for a lot of people, particularly a lot of people that, that are self-employed and and working crazy long hours is they forget the things that as a child or a young adult that really floated their boat mm. surfing skiing comedy you lose contact music, with music and yeah. Yeah. you know i think if you sit back and go you know what was it that made me really happy when i was at university or when i was a mm. an apprentice chef there's some obvious things mm. that some that you need to stop doing and some mm. that you need to reintroduce into your life. Absolutely. You know, and life gets in the way, yeah. you know, and, but, you know, the, 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 the key is, 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 you know, it, well, like you say, bringing in those things in, in, into a daily basis, you know, but consciously, you know, doing, do those things that make you feel good. You know, don't be afraid. Just, mm. just do it. You know, what that's the saying, you know, feel the fear and do it anyway. Mm. You know, my wife's about to, you know, she, she wants to start studying again, you know, and, you know, you know, you know, so you know, at, at forty three. But you know, like you know, so there's, inspiring there's, though, man. Do yeah, it and do it. You know, she just can become a doctor at forty three if well, you want to. Well, good. Then she can look after me in my old age. You know? Yeah, that's <laughs> it, man. Perfect. See? There's benefits but, like, everywhere. I can be man. a private chef. So yeah, no, that's yeah, no, that's it's good. It's yeah, good. amazing, mm. Damo. Thanks so much, man. Thanks for having me, Paul. Much appreciated.